Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are here in the uh, VAB at uh, Cape Canaveral and I just, well, let me scroll through my increasingly long list. Yes, here it is, our RH1 Mars Lander 1. There's some kind of problem with it. Um, anytime I try to load this spacecraft, it crashes the game. Which is really disappointing, but it was probably all those errors we experienced towards the end of the build. I'm, I'm just going to have to delete it because it crashes and we can't launch it, we can't modify it, can't do anything with it. Um, so we're going to have to start from scratch, which really sucks. It was not what I wanted to do two episodes in a row by having... Um, yeah, by doing two build episodes in a row is not really uh, what I wanted to do. This one's still listed as the R8, RA8, and not the RA9. I wonder if the changes, we know this one should load, so let's load it. Maybe it's Jupiter Probe 2 that I actually wanted to load, because that's the one with the AJ-10 up top. Alright, let's... Alright, well, first thing, let's fix this. Bunk. There. Okay, so we've got the two RL-10s. Good. So far. And up top... Yeah, we've got the Asteris still. Alright, so we're going to set all this aside. And... Basically redo all of this from ground up. We can start by getting rid of that. And replacing it with an AJ-10 Advanced. Here we go. Boink. And let's just remove all tanks. Remove all tanks. And now we should just have the one fuel listed. Let me make sure these guys are set up first for Aerozine 15 and 2 Perfect. And then uh, Aerozine. Aerozine. Good. Alright, and then we can set all of this aside start from scratch. So, first we need a pod, and I guess we're probably going to have to go with this uh, Able. It'll control up to 5 tons. It does draw 150 watts. I'm wondering if this is the part that uh, crashed us before. Uh, its electric draw is only 120 watt, which is better, obviously, and it can shut down Oh no, this one doesn't shut down, does it? But anyway, I, I think it's the glitched part. So we're going to have to go with the higher draw. Much smaller, though. This should be the only core that we need as far as our descent stage and our landing stage is concerned, which is a huge benefit all the way around. But uh, we do have to include a battery because this... Alright, set to height if okay. It has only 300 electric charge on its own, which is a problem. Alright, so we'll... Yeah, let's, let's hope that's enough. Alright, I will probably speed up the rest of this build and post because they're kind of boring. And maybe we'll even get to a little test flight, who knows. But I will see all of you when it's done. Hopefully it won't be all that long, because I really hate doing... Rebuilding something that I already built. Anyway, here we go. Alright, so we got a core, we got our battery. Uh, I'm going to spend a little time debating on engines, but uh, we'll get a primary fuel tank. And I think, yeah, we're going to go with the one kilonewton thrusters. And actually, we're going to leave them on hydrazine this time, because I don't know if these running on N2O was the glitched part. And uh, we still don't have landing legs, so I will be utilizing these fuel tanks and this octagonal strut to substitute for said landing legs. Now we just need some control thrusters, give it a pretty little paint job. Alright, mandatory solar panels, and then a short range antenna, and a long range antenna. Offset a little bit, alright. Let's start doing our science loadout. It's going to be the same five instruments as before. We're just going to offset the weight of the fifth with a, a single antenna instead of two. We'll get our parachute set up. I think we're going to do Kevlar on both the Drogue and the primary. 
set them both up for triple shoots to get their altitudes yeah it's gonna tell us we're too heavy but we're probably we're hoping to be empty on fuel by the time we uh, hit the ground also so let's get that long range antenna back on there uh, Delta V looks all right and very carefully we're gonna need a separator and a heat shield that is absolutely mandatory and some struts eventually to kind of stabilize things make it a little more realistic now this was a new tactic I'm taking as far as the angling towards the descent and that is just to uh, build these arms out a little and get these tanks set up alongside them make sure they're all high pressure switch them to hydrazine for these four one kilonewton thrusters those are going to be providing our um, da -da -da. <laughs> Yeah, our deorbit maneuver. That's the word I was looking for. All right, and just a little tweaking on some static solar panels. Hopefully that'll help keep us charged on the way down. And then add in our transfer stage. We're making a few changes to this as we intend to leave it in orbit. So we're gonna give it some long range antennas, the upgraded solar panels because they produce much more power. And since it's gonna be in orbit, we might as well give it some uh, instrumentation to work with, just the magnetometer and the radio plasma wave detector. All right, and just a little tinkering with staging, making sure we've got all of that set up. Cannot forget our short range antennas and our naming convention. All right, and it is at this point that I have now realized that this is the RA-8 rocket, not the RA-9 as I wanted it to be. So this is kind of a problem. Uh, I was hoping it wouldn't be, which is why I'm looking at the Delta V here and just going, yeah, no, this isn't, this isn't going to work. So I'm going to struggle a little bit trying to figure out how to reroute a part. There it is. Make this into a sub-assembly and then go find the actual RA9 that I'm looking for. And so it's a little bit of guesswork. Nope. This is not it. This is a prototype that failed miserably every single time around. So we're going to load up an actual RA-9 with our Mercury Explorer on it and reroute some parts. There we go. And get rid of the probe and slap our new one right on the top of it. Give it a good name and tinker a whole lot with staging because absolutely everything got screwed up uh, when I switched this rocket over. So but all that's uh, good and done we'll switch back to old me for the rest of the commentary all right throw our fairings back on hit the save button and i'm just going to take it outside just to make sure it works simulate but if this crashes the game Alright, let's see how far we can go. Ignition. Lamps away. And we are inching off the bat. Good times, good times. thrust on one of our engines. Can't quite figure out which one. Probably bullets. That little guy there. Well, that really sucks. So much for successful testing. It's 
completely failed now. Oh no. Let's just see what we can do here. bits of things a tank and a fairing I'm trying to find the payload all right uh, all right <laughs> are none of my RCS thrusters just gonna work oh I should probably unlock some tanks huh thrusters responding okay those are responding why aren't those responding I don't know which engines are firing. Certainly not those two. All right, let's ditch those. Insufficient avionics, SAS disengaged. Oh, well, there we go. Can we... oh, no, no, no. That is the opposite of what is supposed to happen. Deploy. Hmm. I really wonder why the thrusters on the descent stage or on the alignment stage if we're not firing. These seem to be doing just fine. now in the happy middle where we have both our teeny tiny drogue chutes and our primaries deployed. That won't last for very long though. Very interesting. I'm, I'm gonna kill it. This has been absolutely dumb. Well, I guess we can just watch this kind of happen. Uh, so, we've got some more issues to work out. It's a good thing we did this test flight so that we can figure them out before we get all the way to Mars and continue our trend of just things going horribly, horribly awry. But, that's gonna do it for today's episode. Uh, expect more testing or something uh, in tomorrow's episode. So, until then, uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. I will see all of you later.